Hi guys, it's Redcoat Viking here, and in this video I want to take a look at some of the biggest changes coming to Hell Let Loose in Update 12, which although we still don't have a solid release date for the update right now, it's already looking like it's going to be a pretty massive release, with loads of cool new stuff to play with, and even a new way to experience some of the existing maps that we already have, so overall very exciting stuff to keep an eye on. Unfortunately it's not looking like the British Commonwealth forces are going to be a part of the update this time around, but if the roadmap's anything to go by then we should still be okay to expect that by the end of 2022. Anyway, back to what is included in update 12. Let's start by talking about a new map called Remag... Rima Rima it's a map based on the small town in Germany with the same name and it's centred entirely around a huge bridge stretching over the Rhine River. This will be Hell Let Loose's first proper bridge map and judging by the layout of the map itself released by the devs, it looks like the big bridge will act as the centre capture point as well as the only way to get across the river. Now I can see that leading to some pretty intense firefights, especially in the beginning when the map's still new and we're all finding our feet, but I'd be lying if I said I wasn't a little bit worried about every match becoming a meat grinder for whichever side fails to secure the centre point first, since the only way you can get from one side to the other is across that bridge, so a couple of machine guns set up behind a couple of sandbags at one end of the bridge won't really have too much of a hard time just holding it for the entire map. And it maybe would be a good idea to add a couple of alternative routes across the river like they do in Postscriptum, even if it isn't necessary historically accurate. After all, the last thing we want is another map that everyone hates, like Purple Heart Lane, but I love the design of the map itself and I'm always happy to see them adding new content to the game, so I guess only time will tell if the community will come to love it or hate it. They're also going to be adding night versions of Remagen, Foy, Hurtgen Forest, Kursk and Purple Heart Lane, but rather than just switching off the sun on the existing maps and making everything dark, they've decided to make them low light and low visibility. So instead of just being pitch black versions of the regular maps, they're going to have a much darker, duskier, more ominous feel, possibly even a foggy tone to them to add an extra layer of challenge and possibly even make previously impassable areas a little bit more feasible if you're playing as inventory. To go along with the night maps, they're giving each faction a unique an accurately modelled flare gun which players in the spotter role can use to light up the darkness with their one and only round of ammunition for it. And as a bonus, any flare launched into the air will not only get you instantly shot in the head, but it'll also act as a recon device spotting all enemies within a 50 metre radius for a total of 30 seconds. A little bit like the recon commander ability, so that's pretty cool. And I definitely see why they've limited it to only having one round of ammunition, but I guess we'll just see how it works in reality. They're also overhauling Omaha Beach a little bit by giving uh, additional cover for the US forces landing on the beach. Vehicles are going to now spawn in huge landing craft, so you might actually have time to get in the tank and start the engine without being immediately wiped out by an AT gun balancing on the cliff top. They're also giving us a German offensive mode for the map where presumably the Germans launch a counterattack against the entrenched allied forces to try and push them back out of Europe. Now, whether you're a fan of playing as the commander or you just like watching cool stuff blow up other cool stuff, you might be happy to know that we're going to be getting two brand new commander abilities. The first one is the ability to call in an ammo drop, which drops a crate of ammunition as you might expect, that can be used up to 12 times to fully restock everything from small arms and rifle ammo to anti-tank rockets and even grenades. And I think it'll be most useful for AT soldiers out in the field, as I think they're the only class that really manages to run out of ammo before getting killed. I don't know about you guys, but I sometimes have trouble staying alive long enough to have to reload at all, but maybe that's just me. The second commander ability is by far the coolest if you ask me, and it goes by the name of Precision Strike. Basically, it's a precision strike launched at a very specific target and carried out by three new nation-specific tank buster type aircraft. The Germans are going to get the new Stuka 87 dive bomber with a central mounted bomb, probably a 500 pounder, and complete with terrifying air siren when it's in a dive. The Americans get the P-47 Thunderbolt with their smaller bomb, but two of them located under each wing, and the Russians in typical Soviet style get the IL-2 with an epic but highly inaccurate rocket strike, but what they lack in accuracy they make up for by just firing loads of them to get the same effect on the target. Pretty cool stuff if you ask me, but squad leaders are going to need to place extremely accurate marks before calling in a precision strike, as even if it's a few metres off it might miss the target entirely and just end up wasting valuable resource points for the team. Moving on to tanks, there's a few different things happening there. The US is getting a replacement for their trusty old M4A1 medium tank, which has been in the game pretty much since day one, and the devs feel like it's starting to show its age a bit, so they're pulling it out of service and giving us the M4A3 75W instead, which has a much more modern design as well as a nicer skin. But from what I can tell, all the stats of the tank will be exactly the same as the existing Sherman, so it's really just a cosmetic change to keep things looking pretty. 
What is exciting though is that the Panther is coming back. The Panther's a German, it was a German medium tank that was removed a couple of updates ago to give it some much needed polish. Unlike the Sherman though, the Panther's been upgraded in ferocity from a medium to a heavy tank and it's also been given some much needed polish to the overall modelling as well as a new sexy lick of paint which they're also going to be giving to the Tiger as well. It's not clear if the Panther will be cheaper or more expensive than the Tiger or if either tank will be more effective at one thing or another, but it'll be interesting to see how all the skilled German players will make best use of having access to two different heavy tanks. Something more subtle but also worth being excited about are some new visual effects, including improved blood hits, artillery explosions and the infamous promise of more. Whatever that entails, I don't know. I for one think some of the effects in the game can be a little bit lacking, and the blast caused by a falling artillery shell is definitely in need of some spice, so it really shreds my nerves to pieces when it starts landing all around me and there's nowhere to take cover. Don't get me wrong, I think they look cool already, but I definitely think they could look better, just like when we went from the old bombing run effects to the new, what you didn't think they could improve much on actually ends up looking really really good, so I'm definitely excited to see what they've come up with there. The rest of the stuff coming in the update is relatively small compared to the rest, but they're putting in half-track mounted machine guns so half-track spawns can defend themselves a little bit, maybe even be able to use them as a more offensive weapon that you care about rather than just being dumped somewhere in the corner when there's no other garrisons nearby. They're also going to be improving the vaulting and machine gun deployment animations which, let's face it, right now they're definitely a bit on the clunky side, as well as giving us the ability to interrupt a reload animation. But as far as I know they haven't said what effects that'll have on the bullets in the old magazine, or if there'll be any repercussions other than just not being able to finish reloading your presumably nearly empty gun. But I guess, as with all things, we'll just have to wait and see. But that's everything coming in update 12 that we know about so far, but like I said there's still no news on when the British forces with all their new weapons and vehicles or any of the maps are coming, but I'll be doing another video very soon covering all the stuff set to arrive by the end of 2022. So if you enjoyed this video then be sure to subscribe to the channel and as always until next time, thanks for watching, have fun and stay awesome.